fucking chance. Closest thing to Jesus Christ, rocking nice. I'm a gift to God. Kind of strange feeling when I cop in your six feet to act. Curving out, he hope married to paper bay. I can't reply. Supercharged, the kids having gas. All you see is a demon back. Balling hard, triple double. T make with the lean and that. Young bitch got no job. She just went cars. That hope he's scheming back. Lost the tail for brush. What's up, everybody? It's Sean, and this is Comics Review coming at you. Eh, kind of bi monthly. From Sunny St. Mary's, uh, California, Maryland. A lot to discuss, a lot of things going on. But let's start off with the pull list. Uh, so far, my pull list, I got The Approach, awesome comic, Batman, Detective, World's Finest. Anybody singing a theme here? Uh, Black Panther, Flawed by Chuck Brown, awesome series. Uh, shout out to the Black Comic Lords for uh, suggesting that. Uh, Go Goblin, I Am Batman, Philadelphia, awesome book by the great one, Rodney Barnes, Love Sick, Maniac of New York, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Nita Hall's Nightmare Blog, awesome by the great one, Rodney Barnes, Nightclub by Mark Millar, Silver Surfer, Ghostlight, awesome book. Something is Killing the Children by James Tenney and the Fourth. Amazing Spider Man. And I got a plethora of Star Wars titles. I didn't realize I liked Star Wars until a couple of years ago, and I just can't get enough of them. Uh, Sana Staros, Vader, Doc Afra, and the High Republic. And High Republic The Blade. I'm also reading Strange Academy and Year Zero. Um, I'm going to start off. This this podcast by saying, you know, Black Panther and I Am Batman, they're both ending. I'm not sure how to feel about it. On one hand, I like, I, you know, I'm a diehard Black Panther fan. Um, he's He's been a part of my, you know, growing up. You know, I've been reading comic books since I was nine. So it's weird to see, you know, him as popular as, as he is in stories that he's in right now in his own series. I do not like this current run of Black Panther. I'm I'm come out and say I don't like it. I hate that they uh beaten him down, kind of disrespected him. You know, not just uh in his own title, but outside of his title on some of these covers, they're making him look like he's I don't know, they're kind of like emasculating him. And I don't like that at all. And it's and it's really weird to see it, and it's weird to read it, and it's even harder to comprehend that it's coming from an African American writer, John Ridley. And on the same token, Ridley also writes "I Am Batman," which is also ending uh, with the next issue. Um, but it's a total, you know, total flip flop of that. I like "I Am Batman." I really like the the universe that he's he kind of built up with his series um with Jace Fox because you know Jace Fox had the you know the future state then you know the next Batman and then he had the second sons the mini the two different mini series before he had this title and I thought he did a, they did a, a lot of extensive world building and character development <clears throat> Jace is not perfect Jace he makes mistakes He's a rookie, a superhero. He kind of let the, let the world down a little bit when John, when uh, the new Superman, Jonathan Kent, who's who's also a very decent character too, came to him and asked him for help during this crisis event. And he said, no, you know, I'm worried about the people in my own city, which is a very myopic view. But I kind of get where he's coming from. A lot of times... And I'm speaking from my own experience. A lot of times uh, black people will be like, oh, we need to do this and do that. And we don't look at the problems in our own communities to try to fix them first. So I understand his realm of thinking with that. But I also see why he recanted and said, you know what? This is a bigger problem than just, you know, this community is, is my problem. But the whole world is, you know, this could really destroy my community, too. So he went to go help. And I and I really like that about him. You know, he sees his mistakes. He 
he tries his best to rectify them, fix them. And that's what I like about Ridley's take on him. And and it's weird because he's dealing with two highly, you know, successful black men as the lead protagonist. But he treats one of them totally different than the other one. And I don't know if it's an editorial decision, editorial direction or not. You know, I I, I don't know. And when I say I, I don't like his characterization of T'Challa, Black Panther, I think it's... <laughs> I think it, it might be an editorial thing. It might, they might be saying, hey, he's going to have a, a fall from grace and then he's going to be reborn again or some bullshit like that. Who knows? I just, uh, I don't like it. But it, like I said, it's interesting that he writes both of these characters simultaneously and they almost had the same kind of run, uh, 14, 15 issues, and uh, they're going to stop. But I really like, uh, I really like I Am Batman, Chase Fox. I hope they do more with the character. I hope he's not like another Batwing. He has a good, you know, 30, 40 issue run and then they kind of forget about him. And oh, by the way, I bought some Batwing <laughs> over the last couple of months. I bought issues one through 10 and it, and it's a decent read. And Batwing is his brother. Really decent character. Um, I, don't, I don't want to get it off into a tangent about what I think they should do with that character, but... You know, sorry to see that both of these two of my favorite titles that I look forward to pulling every month could be going away. So that means I got to figure something else out. I know you heard me mention Flawed by Chuck Brown. Chuck Brown's a pretty good writer. Uh, you see his body work. He is amazing. And Flawed, they're in issue five right now. Four, I think it's five. Um, but it's a really interesting premise as well. It has really decent art. Kind of cartoony for my taste, but you know it it does sequential art very well for what it's trying to convey. But it's a really good story. I don't want to give any spoilers, but uh, the protagonist is very interesting to say the least, and so is the antagonist. Um, I think it's interesting to have both you know women of color in both roles. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. In in. Uh, I would say big three because image is kind of like a big, big deal, too. But it's it's interesting to see that. Um, but if you haven't read it yet, go check it out. Flawed is a really good book. Uh, surprise read of the week or last couple weeks is um, IDW's Dead Seas. Uh, it's a strange story. <laughs> it's a strange story if I've ever seen one. Um, it's interesting. They... These prisoners are on a floating prison ship, and they're basically made to clean up. Proto- well, let me back up. The world of Dead Seas, ghosts are real, and they leave ectoplasm. The ectoplasm is being used as a fuel source and as a revolutionary panacea to cure diseases, um, give power to places, and stuff like that. But the ghosts are real dangerous and they drive you crazy. So what some capitalists did, let's put them on a ship and harvest this ectoplasm. But how do you harvest this ectoplasm? Because it's effing dangerous. Oh, let's get people that society doesn't care about. Let's get prisoners. Let's get let's get some, you know, basically some slaves and say, let's harvest this ectoplasm and, let, you know, sell it. So that's what they did. did some billionaire... They call him a gazillionaire. He gets a, a floating prison ship, makes prisoners clean this ectoplasm and store it, and they'll get time off of their sentences. It sounds very familiar to how the, the prison infrastructure does now, where they have prisoners donate donate organs for, for uh, suspended sentences and to take time off of their sentences. Very similar to what's going on in America right now. But anyway, that title is really good. It's only on issue two. You can probably find it in your LCS for cover price. Um, the art is kind of cartoony, but but passable. Um, very interesting. Uh, the antagonist is Espinoza. She's a woman pirate. Looks like a black woman, too. Uh, she's interesting. Um 
it's a lot of stuff, you know, just on issue two, but it's a lot, it seems like it's a lot of things, uh, like a backstory to kind of fill us in on, but it's a good read, and I like it. Uh, it's a, it's different than what I normally read. It's not superhero fare, no capes, just, you know, wild, wild, high fantasy. Good, good, good book. Back issue bandit. Um, I'm a back issue bandit. I love going to LCS's and, you know, digging through the back issues, trying to fill up my, my collection, you know, filling holes and kind of experience some things that I have not read before. Uh, one of those interesting titles that I picked up over the last couple of weeks uh, was Jupiter's Legacy Requiem by who else? Mark Millar. Uh, Jupiter's Legacy it, Leg- Legacy Requiem kind of uh, fills in after the last Jupiter's Legacy run. Uh, it's really well done. Got some interesting, got an interesting cast of characters and decent art. Um, I think it's <laughs> it's already. I shouldn't say already been option. Jupiter's Legacy has already been and gone from Netflix. Um, I thought the series on Netflix was decent, but you know, I'm in the min- I guess I'm in the minority. Even though it had really good, really positive numbers, it was canceled. But it was a really decent show, and I think it it kind of had a different take on deconstructed uh, superheroes, and what the ramifications would be if certain people got powers and how to how they would you know view society you know how would you view society if you had the powers of superman and not only did you have the powers of superman but your family had the powers of you know different different uh archetypes you know they probably wouldn't pe- view people as as equals they probably view them as subjects it, like i said it's a inter- it's a, it's an interesting book um I picked up issues one through three, and they were pretty good. I, I really enjoyed them. Another good issue I picked up was Beyond the Beyond. It's by Scout Comics. Um, it's by Trop- Propino and Fernando. It's an interesting sci-fi story with some g- fantastic art. The art is just you know superb. Uh, four and a half out of five, if I had to grade it. Also reading uh, Grimm from Boom Comics. I got issue one through five. It's by Stephanie Phillips and Flaviano. It's a really good series. Um, I kind of resisted buying it because of the hype. People were just going crazy saying it was going to be the next something is killing the children. And I, I'm very hesitant uh, of FOMO. So I give, it, I give it a few weeks. Actually, with this, I gave it a few months. And I was like, eh, I, my, my pull list is a little light. So I'll grab something I, I didn't normally, I didn't grab before. And if it's got issues one through whatever, I'll grab them. And I'll give it a read. And I gave it a read and I liked it. I think it was really well done. The art, the story, the co- the coloring too really got me off because it seems like it's kind of dark-ish. And it's, you know, it's it's going somewhere. Um, I probably need to fill it. Fill, uh, fill up the rest of them, get the rest of them and read the entire thing. Um, or just wait for the trade paperback since I like issue one through five, four or five. I think it's five. I got it. Yeah, I got five. I like all of them. Decent. So I'll probably buy the trade paperback. Shifting gears into TV and movies. Has anyone watched The Last of Us, the TV show on HBO Max? Oh, my God. That is the best, um, one of the best horror fantasy sci-fi shows I've ever seen. Uh, with three, I know with, I'm not trying to, you know, have some hyperbole saying that, oh my God, it, this is great. This is, it is. It just is. The season, premi- the premiere was amazing. Uh, episode two was amazing. And three was just amazing as well with Frank and um, what was his name? I forget his name. I should be ashamed of myself. But it was it was really good. Uh, the production value is out of out of sight. Frank and Bill, the the production value is out of sight. Everything is just really the 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 characters, everything about it, the pacing, and it leaves you on the edge of your seat the almost the entire time. 
Uh, the first episode, you know, did a lot of world building and showed how the world fell apart. <laughs> With and like Joel said, you know, it happened on a Friday. It was over by Monday. And as a, you know, a military retiree pe- person who's been around the world, been in combat zones, it could happen that fast. So I, I understood what Joel was saying about hap- you know, starting on a Friday, ending on a Monday. It just shows you how how uh, fragile our world is, and our, also our society, and how collapse could just happen. And none had to be planned out; it could just happen. Uh, it was really well done. Um, makes me think I should have collected. <laughs> I should have collected the comic books. I don't now. The comic books, the speculators, have already uh, you know selling them for mint right now. I think the one of them sold on eBay for about sixteen hundred dollars, nine point eight. The Last of Us, I think it was from Dark Horse Comics from 2013. It's been a while. Yeah, I think it's 2013. It was a companion series to go along with the game when it first launched. Um, it was a mini series, American Dreams or something like that. I, and I've seen, you know, years years ago, those very books just around, you know, maybe... Three, four dollar bins, four or five dollar bins, rather. And it wasn't that many of them. I think the census, they don't have a lot of them on the census, the CGC census. But according to Comic Cron, it's only like 6,600 some issues printed of each version, each, each number. That's nothing. That is nothing. If you look at damage, uh, attrition, just, just life happening. It's, that's probably like 3,000 books out there in the open market. Three, 4,000 books. That's wild. So, you know, if you got them in your back issue bins, you know, I, I know when I collect, or especially if it's some kind of sidewalk sale or buy two, get one free or something like that, I fill up my box with stuff I don't normally read. And that's how I got a lot of stuff I got, especially the back issue stuff from Marvel. Because believe it or not, a lot of stuff they put out from Marvel. I mean, not even believe it or not. You all know if you read comic books, a lot of people will thumb through stuff. If it's not a number one and doesn't have a favorite character in it, they don't. They won't buy it. But they'll introduce a lot of different characters in those books. I noticed that with the Avengers. I noticed that with, especially with the the, the top tier characters like Spider Man, Captain America, and Black Panther. That's how I got Tosin. I didn't realize Tosin was such was going to be such a significant character. So, you know, I normally buy a Black Panther, I buy a version to read, and I buy a version to, sl- uh, not slab, but just to collect. So I bought two versions, two two comics of that, uh, two, two issues of that number. And then all of a sudden Tosin blew up. And now the issue that he's in of Wakanda is going to a second print. I think it was issue number four. I got two issues that I didn't realize it was such a big deal, but uh, but he is he's he's like the future he's a future character. They think he's, you know, in MCU he's supposed to be T'Challa's son or something like that. So his value, and his character value, people are speculating. Um, it's gonna be interesting. We'll see. Also about TV news, James Gunn's his big announcement about Donna DC. I saw some interesting. Uh, Titles, TV shows, movies, but the one that really piqued my interest was Super One, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and the uh, and also the Superman. I think those are interesting. It, I think that they're they're trying to make a DC universe or a cinematic universe that doesn't have Batman as the lead of it. I think that's really interesting. Uh, I always like Superman. He's one of my Superman is Superman, Batman, and Spider Man are three of the top characters you are introduced to as a young person. They're everywhere. You can't shake it. You can't shake it. Um, I know it's a generational thing now with a new generation. You know, Miles Morales is their Spider Man. Miles Morales is their Spider Man. It's a new generation Spider Man. A lot of these kids don't really know Peter Parker that well, but they know Miles Morales. Um. But kids are always introduced to Batman and Superman. And Superman's a really good character to get introduced to. He's a friend to everybody. Not just 
certain people, he's a dude that if you come to his door and say, hey, I need food, I need this and that, if he, if he, he give it to you. That's just the way he is. He's a nice guy. He's always been portrayed as a nice guy. You know, the World War arc was a little different because he had to, you know, basically overthrow Mongol, which is a good arc. But I've always read Superman. I've always esoterically collected him. Like, if you look at my collection, i got several hundred yeah, Adventures of Superman, Man of Steel, Action Comics, super, you know, different miniseries, World of Krypton, World of Smallville, and a million other, like, one shot, Superman the Authority, Checkmate, a million different things. Batman, the same way. A lot of detective, a lot of Batman, a lot of, a lot of uh, peripheral things from the Bat family. Batgirls, Robins. Anything you can think of. But those characters are amazing. And I think that it's interesting that he's want, he wants to build his cinematic universe around Superman. Um, he's arguably one of the first superheroes and probably the most significant one. So I'm interested to see how that works. I'm also interested to see Supergirl. I think she's a very interesting character, too. Um, I'm curious if they're going to have a Legion of Superheroes in her movie. TV show, whatever they, they produce from it. Um, can't wait. I'm excited. I think dumping Henry, Henry Cavill was, you know, a questionable decision. But the guy seemed to know what he's doing. So let, let's see how that works out. Uh, I want to end the, end the show this week with saying um, to the comic book groups that still promote these comics gate people like Aaron Scriver, uh, Chuck Dixon and some of these other guys and get a life man you know I've, I've unfollowed two groups because of this uh, on Facebook and I unfollowed them on Instagram too you know you can't keep promoting dudes that that spout Nazism spout uh, stuff about racism misogyny misgender people and basically a-holes we're not buying that stuff you know like people always say, you vote with your dollars. I, I buy a lot of comic books. I buy a lot of merchandise, figures, everything. If you're disrespecting somebody or you're doing all these things to you know to in, in, to uh, ingratiate yourself to racists and Nazis and white supremacists, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. And if I'm not buying it, other people not buying it either. So people like you will go away one day whether you want to or not. So that's it for me. Till next time, see you down the road. Thank you.